<laughs> okay. So this is a hip opening class. And um, everyone can hear, right? Someone's making a sign like they couldn't hear me. You can hear? Yeah, good. So this is a hip opening class. But we're going to do a little bit of other stuff too, because two hours of hip opening, I don't know if you'd be able to stand up at the end. So um, we're going to do some sun salutations and other things to get, to get rolling along. How many of you are somewhere in Europe? Go like that. How many of you are in the US? How many of you are in other parts of the world? Not Europe and not, no? Okay. How many of you are on other planets right now? <laughs> Oh, a few extraterrestrials. Thanks you for coming. Linda, I think Marilyn is having some problem connecting to the audio. She can't seem to hear me, I think. Marilyn. All right, everyone else. Let's just get you warmed up a little bit with some sun salutations. That's a nice way just in general to get some energy and warmth into the body. So, I have to stand up for that. We'll do a couple sun citations. Some of this I'll do with you, or if I think I need to demonstrate something. Other times I'll be sat down there having a look at the screen so I can check in on you and make sure everybody's okay. Be together, arms by your sides. I want you to just kind of walk through, make it easy, these first sun students. Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chest up. Here you can walk or jump back as you exhale and come down. Inhale, chest up. Exhale, hips back. Listen to your breath. Nice, full, deep breathing. One. The quickest way to warm up is through your breath. Two. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, just walk forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. And Samasiti. Again, same thing. Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chest up. You choose if you want to jump or walk back and lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, hips back, downward dog. Nice, beautiful sound in your breath. One. Two. Three, four, five. Inhale forward. Exhale fold. Inhale up. Exhale. One more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chest up. 
Exhale, take your feet back and lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Deep breathing. One. If you need to rest, you come right down to your knees. Two. This is just getting a little energy and warmth in the body. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, bring your feet forward. Jumping or walking, you choose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Samastitihi. Now, B. Inhale, knees bend, arms up, hands touch. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chest up. Exhale, take your feet back and lower. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, step right foot forward, arms up. Exhale, hands down, step back and lower. Inhale. Exhale, left side inhale, arms up, hands touch. Exhale, all the way down. Inhale. Exhale. Remember, if you need to rest, come down to your knees. One. When we talk about opening the hips, it's actually a whole lot of muscles. It's not only the deep muscles in the hip. Three, it can include the glutes, even the muscles on the back of the legs and the top of the legs. Three, there's a lot of ways to get into the, the hips. Four. Five. Inhale forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, knees bend, arms up, hands touch. Samastitihi. Do one more on your own. Just find a rhythm, do Surya Namaskar B. If you don't know Surya Namaskar B, just be creative, invent something, but move with your breath and then stay five in the down dog. Then we're gonna start being a little more specific with some hip opening things. But again, hips can be anytime the leg is moving. So there's muscles required to make any movement there in the hip. So even when you're doing B and stepping forward and back, you're already moving in there. Even the up dog working the front of the legs and the down dogs, you're already warming up and lubricating those hips. Count out five of your own breaths and on the sixth inhale, you'll come forward. Even if you're not quite at five breaths yet, go ahead and make your way out and coming back to standing. I'm going to take you through a little eclectic arrangement of postures. Some have nothing to do with Ashtanga, but this is not really a Ashtanga centric class. Feet together, arms by your sides. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chest up. 
Exhale, hopper, step back, lower. Inhale. Exhale. So remain here in downward dog. Now raise your right leg straight up. Just get in a little bit into that hip of the right leg, but also even the left one. We're working on the back of that leg, etc. Trying to keep the hips squared for the moment. Lower your right foot down. Raise your left leg up. Feel the front of that left leg working a little bit, the back of the right leg stretching. Breathing deep. Lower the left foot down, bend both knees all the way to the mat, and sit back on your heels and rest your forehead down on the mat for a moment. And then return to downward dog. Raise your right leg again. Some of you already know this next posture. Some of you might, might be new. Open your right hip, bend your right leg, let it fall behind you and look under your right arm. I call this the urinating dog. <laughs> you can imagine a tree in front of you there, but I want you to really relax that right leg and let gravity start to pull it over and it, it's a very simple way of getting into the hip and breathing deep, of course. And lift the leg back up. Take the left leg down. Right leg down, sorry. Left leg up now. Open the left hip, bend the left leg behind you, look under your left arm. Relax that left leg, let it hang behind you. When possible, we want gravity to do the work and breath to take us deeper into a posture rather than just trying to push into it. So this is opening that left hip, but also working the right leg as well. So both things happening. And lower the left leg. Bring your knees to the floor. Go back to this neutral resting position. Palm toward the heels, head down toward the mat. You can return to this any time in the class you need to. Return to downward dog. Now step your right foot forward, bend your left leg and let the left knee come down to the floor. Take your hands from the floor, come up, and rest your two hands on top of your right leg. Start to bend your right leg, lowering the hips. So the hips start to move toward the right heel, but you lift your chest. And you may or may not, depending on your flexibility, start to feel something on the top of that left leg, up near the hip. Maybe in the right hip as well. And then release, hands down, and step back to downward dog. Now step the left one forward, right knee to the floor. Hands off the floor, resting on top of the left knee. Lifting the chest as you're shifting those hips down. So the front leg bends a little more. Breathe deep. You want to force, but you want to create 
just the appropriate amount of resistance and then breathe and you'll feel yourself starting to sink a little more in to that zone. And release, hands down. Let's repeat the urinating dog. Raise your right leg up, open the right hip, drop the knee behind you, look under your right arm. Breathing. Let's relax and lift into that hip again. Right foot down. Left leg up, open the hip and the knee, drop it behind you, looking under your left arm. Left foot down. Right foot forward. Left knee down. Now this time, you're going to shift your hips back a bit, hands to the floor, and start to slide your right foot forward. Now, depending on your flexibility, some of you might have to stop way up here. For those of you more flexible, just keep going. You can keep your hands on the floor for support unless you get so far down that you can take the hands away. You just leave them there, chest up and breathe. So remember, some of you are going to be with the leg bent. You might look more like I'm doing up here or something like this. Or way forward, depends. Keep the breath flowing. And start to come out by shifting the hips back. Step that right foot back. Return to down dog. Stay just in the down dog for a moment. Left foot forward, right knee down. You can kind of shift your hips back to start with and then slide forward until you find your level. Breathing deep. Always focus on the breath. It's going to tell you how far to go. If the breath starts to really become restricted or becomes ragged or harsh, back out. And coming back again to a downward dog. Raise your right leg. Let's open the hip. Back to the urinating dog. Look under your right arm. Relax that right leg. Right foot down. Left leg up and open. Breathe in deep. Left foot down. Bend your two knees to the floor. Sit back on your heels at resting position. Even within this resting position, you're kind of moving back into the hips as well. Return to downward dog. This time you bring your right knee forward between the hands, but your right foot comes a little bit out to the left side of your body, like I'm doing. Back foot, ankle is straight. And you start to let your 
hips drop down toward the floor, moving down this way, and lift your chest up. You can choose if you want to do this up on your fingertips or hands flat. And then you can choose to stay upright or start to walk your hands forward or slide your hands forward slowly until you reach whatever level of excitement you want to go to. <laughs> and breathe deep. Some of you will be so flexible, you can come all the way forward and take your head right down, your forehead on the mat. Or maybe you're, you're more sat up, up straight or somewhere in between. Now, curl your left toes under on the back foot. Shift your hips back to downward dog. Stay just a moment there, a breath or two. And then bring your left knee forward between the hands. The left foot is out, out by the right of it. First, you're sitting up straight, maybe on your fingertips, maybe hands down. You can remain there or start to walk or slide your hands forward. Until you reach whatever level feels appropriate. Keep the breath flowing. And then walk the hands back again, coming up. Curl the toes under on your right foot. Shift back to a downward dog. Raise your right leg, open the hip, look under the right arm. Right foot down. Left leg up and open the hip. Left foot down. Again, repeat, bringing your right knee forward. So you have options here. The further forward you bring your foot, the more intense you will feel the stretch probably on that outer hip out there. So if you're more flexible, you might bring that right foot a little more forward. Less flexible, you keep it pulled back toward the left hip. So either foot tucked in or forward, or maybe just a little forward. And then what you do is that left hip wants to lift up, you start pulling it down and forward. You may feel something on the outer right hip when you're doing And you're lifting your chest to start. So repeating the same thing we did before, but you can increase the intensity of it by the placement of that foot or decrease the intensity. Start to bring your hands forward. Of course, the breath is deep. The breath will be your guide, how far to go. And walking your hands back. Return to downward dog. The left knee comes forward. Remember, you choose. Bringing the left foot more forward intensifies the stretch. Bringing it back decreases it. One side might be different than the other. You can remain sat up here, or you can start to take the hands forward. One interim phase is to stop on elbows, which is still a lot of flexibility. Or some of you are going to go further forward. Breathing deep. 
you want to just sink into these stretches, not forcing yourself. And you're sinking in with the depth of the breath. Exhales tend to increase the depth and in inhales create some stability and length, and then exhales a little deep. Walking your hands back again, return to downward dog. Take your two knees to the floor, sit back on your heels for a moment. Downward dog. Again, right knee forward, repeating the same thing. Now, remember you have the option of where to place this foot further forward or further back. You're going to take your right elbow across to the left side like this. Drop your right shoulder down, put your hands together, and twist a little open. Remember, you decide where you want that foot further forward or further back. And release, lift the chest, change your legs, right foot back, left knee forward. Bring your left elbow across. Where's your breath? Breathing into wherever you feel the stretch. Release, return to downward dog. Stay a breath or two here. One more time, right knee forward. As usual, you determine where you want to put that foot further forward and back. Now, you're going to take your left elbow across the body. So you're twisting. I'm dropping my left shoulder toward the floor and looking up and twisting around. So as I've got my left shoulder toward the floor, the left hip is also moving toward the floor and you're breathing deep and maybe you're feeling some more stretch in there so the further you take that shoulder toward the floor and the further you take that hip down the more stretch you feel and release and coming up return to downward dog pause a moment and then change other leg forward. You're in control of the intensity of this stretch. Bringing the foot closer in to the hips, less stretch, bring the foot more forward, intensifying it. Twist around, right elbow comes across, palms together. If it's too much, revert to one of the previous things we did. Breathe deep. Whichever choice you're making, you need to keep the breath as the focus. Good job and release. And downward dog. and bring your feet forward. You can jump forward, walk forward, or just anything you need to do and come through and sit down. Now, take your left foot under and right foot 
over. Now what you can do is position so that you are trying to see which angle works best for you. The lower legs are kind of parallel over the top of each other like that. Yeah? The feet are really flexed. So if you look down in the middle, you see an inverted triangle. The back of your legs is the flat part and then going in toward your groin is the point of the triangle. Some people call this a double pigeon. You can sit up or just like you did a moment ago, you start to walk your fingers forward. And you're gonna go as far forward as seems appropriate. The leg, it's like it's in a half lotus shape, but the foot is not up near the hip. It's on top of the knee. That's it, Claire, and really flex your feet. And the lower foot should come forward just under the other knee. So it's that triangular shape between your legs. Yeah, feels different when you bring that foot forward, right? If it's too much, then bring it back. Okay, good, sit up. Switch your legs, other leg on top. Be sure your feet are really flexed strongly. Bring that top foot across so it's almost at the knee. It's not behind the leg. And then the lower foot comes forward so it's under the other knee and both feet are really flexed. If that's too intense, bring that lower foot back by the hip closer. If it feels all right, walk your hands forward. Flex your foot, Kanchi. Breathe deep. And sit up. Straighten your legs in front of you and just wiggle them around a little bit. Now, you can repeat the same thing again with the foot on top. But what you're gonna do is rotate around and put your elbow on top of the foot and start to twist around. So if the right foot is on top, you take your right elbow across toward the right foot. Other way, Rachel, we're gonna, we're gonna twist both ways, but first time is toward the foot like that. Yes. Palms together and start to rotate a bit. If ever you reach something that feels like it's too much or it's inappropriate, you, you repeat the previous thing that felt better. Breathing deep. Now sit up. And if appropriate, twist around. Put your left elbow on top of the right leg. Drop that left shoulder down toward the leg and rotate, push your palms together and feel that rotation. You should feel a nice big stretch on that outer hip. If not, you're just a really flexible hip person. <laughs> Be sure you're breathing deep. Now sit up, inhale. Release your two legs, put them on the floor in front of you. Just wiggle them around a bit. Other leg on top. Flex the feet. Alec, flex your feet more, yeah. Okay, twist toward the foot. The left elbow comes across toward the left foot. You're twisting round. And the more you drop the shoulder down toward the floor, the more you feel a, a twist, the more you feel a stretch. Other way, Samir. And then come up. The legs remain there, twist the other way. So now your elbow's coming out on top of that leg, on top near the knee, palms together. 
Rachel, don't twist so far around. Keep your knee more like on top of your elbow on top of the leg and drop the back the other way and push the shoulder down. You'll feel more stretch on the hip. Feel that? You should, yeah. Breathing deep. And release. Hands down. Curl your legs under. And then go to downward dog. Just in, you can just walk the feet back. Go to a downward dog position. Stay there a couple of breaths. And then raise the leg and repeat that urinating dog zone. Right leg up. Open the hip. Let the leg fall behind you. Look under your right arm. Try to let gravity just sink in there into the hip zone, breathing deep. And shift, other leg. Left leg up, open the hip. I recommend as you're learning this, you only raise one leg at a time. <laughs> Later you can try both. Breathing deep. Lower the left leg down to the floor, knees to the floor, put your bum back on your heels and rest, resting zone for a moment. Now, as you're in the resting zone, take your knees apart a little wider and sink down. So it starts to open inside the legs a little bit. And return to downward dog. Step your right foot outside your right hand. And this is gonna, it's hard to describe in words, but you need a visual reference to look up here. Now take your right hand outside the right ankle. Leave your left hand on the floor but pull your head down toward the inner right ankle. My right hand on the outer right ankle, kind of pulling me down. My head is reaching toward the inner left ankle. My left hand's on the floor for support. And release. Step your right foot back. Left foot forward, left hand outside the ankle. I'm pulling my head down toward the inner ankle. Of course, you're breathing deep. Very good. And return to downward dog. Now walk or hop forward and come through to sitting. Just come all the way through. Take your right foot back. If you need something under your left hip, that's okay. Or you can even put your left hand on the floor for support. Knees close together. Actually, everyone keep your left hand on the floor for support. It's not only support from falling over, but I push my hand against the floor and that starts to bring me forward. And that right hip wants to float. So you're going to try to shift your weight a little bit to the right to keep that hip closer to the floor and breathing deep. And then sit up, change your legs, left foot back. Remember, if you need something under your right hip, fine. Put your right hand on the floor and start to shift your body coming forward. And sit up. 
Take both legs in front of you, just wriggle them around a little bit. And now sit up on top of your heels. So curl both feet under you, sitting on the heels, feet together and knees together and feet pointed. So you're the tops of the feet on the floor. Okay, so the feet are pointed, yes. And just sit there and breathe. Knees on the floor, Natalie. Knees on the floor, knees together. Point your feet. Yeah, just simple. Just sitting there. Great. Now, some of you are feeling nothing, like you could just sort of sleep like that. If you're in that category, like you're not feeling a lot of stretch, take the heels apart and see if you can start to sit down between your two heels. Maybe the bum comes all the way to the floor. Maybe it's just near the floor and you're breathing deep. If you need your hands on floor for support, use them so you don't have too much weight there. Okay, and then come up, release your feet, take them back in front of you again. Just wiggle them around. Now take only your right foot back like you did before, just the right foot. But instead of folding forward, fold back. You can take your hands on the floor behind you, maybe to your elbows, maybe just a little ways back. If you have the flexibility, you can try to take the shoulders down toward the floor. It's a way different stretch than when folding forward, different part of the leg. And sit up. Release the right, shake the legs a little bit left. If you're having enough stretch and fun sitting up, remain there. Otherwise, you start to go back. Maybe you stop on elbows. Maybe the shoulders. You can even experiment taking arms over the head if you wish, or keep elbows on the floor. sitting up, legs in front, wiggle them around a little bit, right leg back again. Now you're each going to find a point where you've, you've reached your maximum level of fun. Okay, so you can remain sitting up where you start to fold back again, the same exact thing, right leg back, maybe on the elbows. Now, if you come all the way down there and you wish to go a little further, bend your right leg and take your left foot to the floor near your hip. The left leg bends. Now, if you want even more stretch, you reach out there and grab that left leg and try to pull it up toward your chest. Oh, I see. You can use your hands to pull the leg up. The leg remains bent, Karina, and grab the shin. Bent leg, Karina. Bend your leg. Yeah, hold the shin and pull it in. There you go. And release. Straighten that leg and sit up. Shake your legs out a little bit. Other one, left leg back. Find your depth. You can remain sitting totally up if you wish, or you go back a little bit, or you come to your elbows or to your shoulders or all the way to your back. Only if you're really feeling it, are you gonna, feeling like it's appropriate, are you gonna bend that right leg, taking the foot flat to the floor to start, 
And then if you wish to, you can take your hand or hands up. Yeah, and breathe. And release and sit up. Shake your legs out a little bit. And go to downward dog. Stay there about two, three breaths. Raise your right leg, repeat the urinating dog. Open the hip, drop the leg behind you, looking under the right shoulder, right arm. And then switch other side. And down. Take your knees to the floor, sit back on your heels, rest a moment, rest your head on the mat. And sit up right where you are. Either remain on your heels or take the heels apart and knees together and sink down between the heels. Try to keep your knees close together or touching even if possible. Knees together, Alec, unless it hurts. Now, remain there or start to lean back. Only if you have the flexibility and it, it feels okay. Maybe you stop on your elbows. Maybe you come all the way to your chest. Maybe raise your arms over your head, but you're gonna decide and be responsible. Knees are on the floor, Natalie. Knees on the floor, and you're leaning back. Take the feet apart so your bum is down between the feet, yeah. Very good, and inhale, coming up, finding a way to extract yourself from that position. Release your legs in front, bounce them around a little bit. Left leg straight, right foot inside your left elbow, right arm outside the right leg. The foot is really flexed. Sit up tall and don't do the rocking around thing. Just sit up and try to equally pull knee and foot in toward your chest as you breathe. And release. Other side. Left foot inside right elbow. Left arm outside the knee, sit up tall and try to equally pull foot and knee in toward your chest. Strongly flex that left foot. That helps to stabilize the leg and the knee. Breathe deep. Listen to your breath. If something becomes really painful, back out. Don't do something that's hurting your body. and release. Shake your legs out a moment. Now right leg, same thing again. Lift the right leg up. Hug it into your body. Either remain there or fold forward over the left leg. 
only as far as feels appropriate. You don't have to fold at all. Relax your head. Breathe deep. And sit up. Release that leg, let it come down. Shake it out a little bit. Left side. And folding forward, if appropriate, breathing deep. Don't hold your breath, but do relax your neck. And sit up and release legs in front. Now, you're going to lie down on your back to start. Raise just your right leg. Two hands behind the leg to start to pull it down. Leg is straight. Maybe the leg's way up there, you've got to hold behind the upper leg or the knee or the shin or the ankle or really flexy people, you might be getting that foot further down toward the floor. And let the leg come straight up and down. Other side, left leg up. Pulling the leg down. Again, less flex, we might be holding behind the upper leg or the knee or the calf or the ankle. And inhale, leg up and release. Raise both legs. Bend the knees, grab your outer edges of your feet. Keep the lower legs perpendicular to the floor and start to pull your knees down. Don't let your bum roll up too much. Trying to keep it close to the floor as you're pulling those knees down toward the floor. And release the feet, bring your legs down. Shake them out a little bit. Bend both legs, but keep your feet flat on the floor. So I just, all I did is bring my heels in a bit toward my bum. Right leg up. Now you're gonna do what you did sitting up a moment ago. You're going to take your right knee inside the right elbow, either just the left hand on the left foot, or if you really have a lot of flexibility, you're going to hug it in. So it might be just hands holding foot and knee as I'm doing up here. Or as you're more flexible, the right knee comes inside the right elbow, left arm around. Now the left leg, if you want more stretch, you straighten it out toward the floor, or you keep it bent. If you extend it, you're going to feel more stretch. It's the same thing you were doing sitting up, but you're now lying down on your back. And you're breathing deep. And release. Straighten the right leg and then lower it down. Shake your legs out a little bit. Left leg up. 
Bend the left leg to start with. You're going to decide after if you want to straighten it. The right leg is bent, sorry, right leg's on the floor. Hugging the leg, maybe you're holding with your hands, maybe you're really flexible and you've got the knee inside the elbow. If you want more stretch, you start to straighten that right leg. But leave it on the floor. Laura, leave your leg on the floor. If you want more stretch, extend the leg. Just slide your foot toward the front of your mat, the right foot. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And release that. Raise both legs up to the sky, straight up. Now bend your knees into your chest and let your heels drop toward your bum. Hug your legs, just reach right around them and pull both knees in toward your chest. Your head can just stay on the mat. Samir, reach outside. Just grab your, shin, grab your legs, just hug your legs. No, don't hold the feet. Just cross your, just grab with your hands. Not on the feet. Not on the feet, Samir. Just hug your shins, yes. Okay, let your feet come down, straighten your legs, lie flat for a moment. If it feels better to keep legs bent, you can leave them bent. Bend both legs, pulling your heels in toward your bum. Raise your right leg straight up. Now the left foot still on the floor. Put your right foot in sort of a half lotus on top of the left leg. Now reach through the leg and around the back of your other leg. And give a little hug, pulling the leg in toward your body. Raj, change your legs. Right foot, half lotus. Leave your left foot on the floor for a moment. Bend your left leg, Raj. Now reach through and hug the legs into your body. Yes, by that. Sometimes it gets confusing, the words. And release. <clears throat> If you need a moment, shake the legs out or you can go directly into the other side. So the left leg goes into half lotus on top of that right. And then if you wish, you start to hug that other leg into your body. Where's your breath? And release. <clears throat> Once again, raise both legs up. You're lying on your back. <clears throat> Grab the outer edges of your feet, pulling your knees toward the floor, close, close to your torso. And then straighten your legs, release the hands from the feet. Now start to let your knees roll out to the sides and the soles of your feet come together. And start to pull the two feet in and let your knees roll out to the sides of your body. And release, let your legs come straight up. Now let both legs start to fall out to the sides. Legs remain in line with the hips. <clears throat> your flexibility is determined how far apart they go. Maybe they go way out. Your hands can be inside your legs as you open them out. I don't want you to really pull your legs. Just let the weight of your arms hang there on your legs a little bit and breathe. You're not forcing them. 
You're breathing deep. And return to the center. Bring the soles of your feet together again. Repeat the one you did before this, where the knees go out and you hold your feet and pull them in. It's like Baddha Konasana lying down on your back. And release the feet and raise the legs and repeat the other one one more time. Open the legs out to the sides. Just start surrendering to gravity. Don't hurt yourself. You can have the hands on the inner legs, but it's just more of the weight of your arms. You're not trying to force them out. And you're breathing really deep. Okay, and return. Just bend both knees into your chest. Let your heels drop your bum and give yourself a big hug. Just hug the legs in toward your body. And now just slowly at first start to, to roll forward and back, up and back and up and back. until you come all the way up to a sitting position. Samir, I saw in a chat, you said there's two Samirs here, but I only see one. I can still call you Superman, which is what your request was, but I only see one Samir in class. <laughs> I don't see two. Maybe I'm not seeing the other, other one. Uh, uh, Lauren, Lawrence and Samir, there's two. Uh, I only see one Samir, so I'm talking to you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. No worries. Now, do the same thing sitting up, the Baddha Konasana. Bring your two feet in toward your groin. Put your fingers on top of the feet and your thumbs inside the feet and start to open the feet like you're opening a book. And try to sit up straight. It's hard, the low back wants to roll out. Just remain sitting as straight as you can. Don't fold forward yet. Without folding forward, just tuck your chin and look down. Imagine there's something interesting written on the bottom of your feet and you're trying to read it. So you're sitting up there trying to read something on the soles of your feet. You're a fortune teller that reads foot lines. <laughs> you're reading your own feet. Now, inhale, look forward. Exhale and start to bow forward. As much or as little as is appropriate. Relax your head. Extend through the top of your head. And now sit up again. This time, tuck your chin to your chest and start to take your head down toward your feet. Your back is going to round. Are you breathing? I need to hear you over here in Texas to hear that beautiful breath. And now sit up. And now open your feet in front, straighten the legs in front of you and then open the legs really wide. And just sit up straight to begin with. Then you take your fingers in front. You start with them just here. And imagine your fingers are like little spiders and you just start to walk away, walking forward. But you're going to keep your knees and feet pointing straight up. 
and you walk as far forward as is appropriate, maybe the hands come flat to the floor. When you reach your maximum level of excitement, you stay there. You want to keep going, you keep going, but you keep your legs active. And so they're rolling back to keep them pointing straight up and you're breathing deep. And start to walk your hands back. Now try to not change your hips. Turn your torso toward the right leg. Maybe the hands are resting on the leg. Or you start to walk those little spiders along each side of the leg, coming further and further forward. Maybe the hands are flat. Maybe you're remaining sitting up. Breathing deep. The legs are active. They're not just collapsed. And sit up, walking your hands in. And turn, walking out over the left leg. There's a little bit of rotation happening in your torso. And then walking back up to sitting. And one more time heading forward. You can take bigger you know, steps if you want, but just make it controlled. Don't go flying in or out of some part of things. And sitting up. And repeat the process again. Turn toward the right and start to fold over the right leg. And sit up. Turn to the other side. Listen to your breath. Lengthen through the top of your head, so don't lift your chin too much. Come back to the center. Carefully bring your two legs in and just bounce them around a little on the floor. Bop, 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 bop. I'm going to tell you a story from way back when I first learned this Ashtanga Yoga. We're going to do Prasadita Padottanasana. Yeah. If you're familiar with Ashtanga, you know that in the standing sequence. You probably are aware of A, B, C, D. Long, long ago, many centuries ago, we had to do A, B, C, D, E. All right, and even D was different than it's done now. Okay, so you know A, B, and C. So let's get you started with that. So stand up if you can. <laughs> Take your feet apart. A is as you're familiar with it, hands toward the floor. Start to take your hands back, keeping lower arms perpendicular to the floor. Looking back through your legs. Breathing deep. 
I want you to use your adductor muscles a little. That's the muscles inside your leg, slightly resisting to help control the movement. Inhale, chest up. Exhale, hands to waist. Inhale up. Exhale, pause. Extend your arms, inhale. Hands to waist, exhale. Hands remain there, inhale. Exhale, fold the hands, stay on your waist as you fold forward. So, so far it's the same. Yeah, nothing's different than what you normally do. Elongate the spine a bit more each time you inhale, each time you exhale, you sink a little more. Inhale, come up with control. You don't want to go too fast, you might get dizzy. Pause there. Inhale, extend your arms. Exhale, hands behind. This is the standard ABC. Inhale here. Exhale, bow forward. I'm not concerned about which hand position you use, whichever feels best. Breathe deep. And coming all the way up again, not too fast. Exhale, release. Aching to sit down for a moment. Now I'm going to show you the old school D and E. So D today is taught like this. This beautiful box shape with the arms lifting. Well, back when I learned this, B was you hold on to your toes and you slide your feet out. And you keep your chest and hips on the same plane, like this. And go as far as you can while keeping chest and hips like that. But notice how I'm keeping hips in line with the heels not too far forward and not hanging back. So there's this action of here and holding the chest up. Want to try it? Don't hurt yourself. You don't have to try it. You can repeat A, B, or C. Or if you want to try this one, you hold your toes and you start to slide your feet out. Keep your chest up. Alec, chest up. The chest stays on the same level as the hips. So as the, as the hip drops, the chest just stays with it. Try not to hang back too much. And you go as far as you can while keeping control. If the groin drops, the chest drops with it, but you don't drop below. The chest should remain on the same level as the hips. Lizzie. I think you're too low. Your, your torso has to stay parallel to the floor. Okay, and release. Find an escape route that's safe for you. <laughs> and relax a moment. Okay. Now you're really curious what's E, right? Well, E is you always go as far as you can. Take your arms back, palms up, like this. Yeah? So feet on the floor, arms back, palms up, groin as close to the floor as you can get. Do not hurt yourself, you guys. You can repeat A, B, C, or D, but you start to lower down and the arms stick back through the legs with the back of the hands on the floor and the palms up, arms straight. Requires a lot of control on the legs.
So you have to learn to use muscles inside the legs to hold. Okay, and then find a way to extract yourself from there. <laughs> but you can imagine if you did A, B, C, D, E, if you did all five of those, by the time you're through with E, it's like bringing your legs back together feels like, you know, impossible. That's how we learned it. You know, that's really opens the groin quite a lot, you know? Okay. Now, let's come back to a sitting position. And we're going to either have you repeat this for a moment. Actually, let's go through a whole sequence. You'll decide where you want to jump off the train or stay on. First, we'll go to angle. Bend your right leg. Right hand or left hand grabs the right foot. Right hand grabs the ankle. I'm going to pull my shoulder, my knee behind the shoulder here like this. Right hand down. I start to straighten the right leg as much as possible. Leaving the right hand on the floor. And look under your left arm. And release, come back to center. Right foot, inside, left elbow, right arm outside, sit up really tall, pull the leg into your torso and breathe. We did this one earlier. These are kind of preparations for taking leg behind the head. If you'd like to, you can have a little conversation with your leg here. My conversation goes like this. I love you, Leg. I want to thank you, Leg, for carrying me around the streets of the world and up and down the, to the market and everything. I appreciate that, Leg. And, Leg, one day, you may be just like this on the other side of the body. But even if you never go there, Leg, I want you to know I love you just the way you are. Even though you're not shaped like other people's legs, I love you for your being so special. And this gave your hip a chance to open. Now you can repeat coming to here, hand down, or you can start to pull the leg behind your head and you decide how far you want to try to go with it. Okay, there's some hip opening things to try to work toward that leg behind the head. So you can start to pull the leg back toward your neck. Good job, release. Left side. So take your two hands, pull that left knee behind the shoulder, left hand on the floor, Start to straighten the left leg. Look under your right arm. And then leg in front, hugging your leg. Be nice to your leg. Have your own little conversation with it. If our leg could talk, it may say, hey man, I looked in my user manual, all I'm supposed to do is walk and run and stuff. I don't know what you're talking about behind the head. That's not in the user manual. So appreciate the leg for what it's supposed to do. Now, if you wish to go further, left hand on the floor, right hand grabs that foot, or you just take two hands and you start to pull behind. Or maybe you just keep holding with the right hand and the left arm, you're trying to get that shoulder through the legs.
Okay, and release. Both legs down in front, shake them around a little bit. Ba, 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 ba. There's a way to do something similar lying on your back. In some ways you have more control because there's not, there's not the issue of trying to remain, you know, trying to not fall over. So you can watch once and then you can try it on your own. I have to adjust this little microphone thing. Okay. My left leg is bent. I take my right leg up. I bend the right leg. I grab it with my left hand like this. I've now made a circle here with left arm and right leg. I start to sit up through the circle. I take my right hand. I grab the outer leg over here. That leg is bent, so I can grab it. And then I can start to pull my leg behind the head like that. It's a way to do a little research lying on your back. So lie down. Left foot on the floor, right leg up. Left hand, grab your right foot. You make a circle. Do a sit up through that circle. Take your right hand and grab your left leg and try to pull your shoulder through. You got it, Daniela. Oh, the, use your arm and grab that leg up there. Okay, switch, other side. The benefit of reaching through is it helps you to get that shoulder to come forward, to come through when you're trying to get that leg back. So lie down, left leg up, right hand grabs the left foot. You make that circle. Do a sit up through the circle and with your left hand, grab your right leg and start to pull the shoulder through. Raj, grab the outside of your leg with that hand. Yes, that's right. Livia, bend that right leg more it's easier to hold on to it yeah it's easier to grab and release lie flat on your back raise both legs straight up start to bend your legs grab the outside edges of your feet and repeat what we did before pulling knees down toward the floor Keeping the knees close to your torso, trying to keep your sacrum near the ground as you pull the two knees down toward the floor. And now raise both legs up. Take the soles of the feet together and start to pull the feet down, but let your knees bow out to the sides. So it's like Baddha Konasana lying on your back. You're pulling your feet in. And now release and straighten both legs up again. Now bend both knees, keep them together into your chest. Hug and just roll a little up and back. You're not going to sit all the way up, but just rolling up and back. And then lie down again. Take your left foot to the floor near your hips and straighten the leg. Just slide it toward the front of your mat. Left leg. The right leg is still bent. Okay, now. Take your right leg just by itself and hug it into your body. The left leg is flat on the floor. Hug just the right leg in. Now keep holding the right leg with your left hand and pull it across your body. Carla, lie down flat on your back. Lie on your back, Carla. Yeah. And now pull the leg across your body. Let your right arm point out to the side. You're pulling the leg across your body. The right leg is pulling all the way across toward the floor.
and return to the center. Oh, there you're not sure. And then the other side, it's just this, it's just pulling across it. That's all we're doing is that. As you pull the leg across your body, look the opposite way. Take your gaze the opposite way. It's okay, that hip's going to float up in the air. That's good. Let it do that. Now return to the center. Bring both knees into your chest. Hug them both in. Now bring both legs across to one side or the other. doesn't matter which side first. But use your hand to pull them across, just like you did before. So one hand is on top of the legs, pulling them across. And look the opposite way. So the other arm is pointing out to the side. You're twisting around. Looking the opposite way from the way your knees are pointing. And return to the center. And tip to the other side. and return to center. Straighten both legs straight up to the sky. Hold behind the legs and pull them down toward your torso. And breathe, breathe, breathe. Now let your left leg come down to the mat, flat up toward the front of your mat. The leg comes flat to the floor. Now with your right leg straight, pull it across your body like you did before, twisting across with a straight leg. Alex, straighten your left leg if you've got room to do that. Yeah and return to the center, change your legs, pulling the leg across your body, where's your breath? and return to the center. Now, bend your knees into your chest, but leave your arms on the floor out to the sides. They kind of have to point straight out to the sides. It depends how much room you have in your space. Straight out from your shoulders, not down by your hips. Oh, I see the other Samir, Lawrence and Samir. Arms flat on the floor, out straight from the shoulders. Take both legs to the right and look to the left. Arms flat on the floor, straight out to the sides. They're not over your head. And return to center and the other side. And return to center. Hug your legs into your body. Straighten both legs, let them come down to the mat. Okay, some of you are in tight spaces, just be aware of your surroundings. If you're right next to somebody, you just have to coordinate your timing. Bring just your right leg up and place your right foot on top of your left leg. So bend the left leg, bend the right leg, sorry. All that's confusing. Yeah, your right leg is bent, the foot is on top of the left, arms out to the sides. Now just this sweeping action, drop your 
knee to the left and then open to the right and just start going back and forth like that just the one leg and you turn your head opposite direction from which the knee is going. So your head is rolling side to side as your knee is going, and you're looking opposite direction. And then return to center and change your legs. And just start dropping the leg one way and then it opens and your head turns opposite from where the leg is going. It's just sort of a free movement. You're using your breath. As a general rule, you're exhaling when the leg gets close to the floor and inhaling in this middle. And return to center. Bring both legs up, give yourself a hug. Now place your arms on the floor. Try to keep your knees together and take two knees, same time, back and forth, side to side, turning your head opposite away. Your arms are on the floor, flat out to the sides, rolling the legs side to side. Try to keep your knees close together while you're doing this, turning your gaze opposite from the legs. And return to center, give yourself a hug. Now, let your left leg foot come down to the mat and straighten it toward the front of your mat. Left leg straight onto the mat. Right leg straight up. Now you guys, some of you, you're not gonna have the space to do this. If you're next to people, don't kick each other. You might have to move here in a moment because what you're gonna do is put your arms flat on the floor and take that straight leg all the way across your body and then out to the side, back and forth, boof, boof. Turning your head opposite from which direction the leg is going. and then return to the center and change legs. And center. Hug your legs into your body. Now I'll bet you can guess what's coming next. Now you can repeat one of the previous things we've done or now both legs up. So two legs, same time, they drop to one side and then the other. It requires a lot more control from your core. Feet together, Karina. Both legs one side, both legs other side. Turning gaze opposite from the legs. Samir Superman, put your arms straight out to the side so you don't have to hold your mat. Yeah. And return to center. Give yourself a big hug, bend the knees. begin to roll up and back. Until you come all the way up to sitting. And we're gonna come back and repeat some things you did in the beginning and see if they feel different now. So go to Downward Dog. Raise your right leg up, open the hip like the urinating dog action, knee bent, falling behind. 
But this time, when you lower that leg, instead of just taking it to the floor, take it all the way forward near your hands. So bring your right leg forward all the way near your hands. Not behind you, Claire. Wow, you get extra points for that. Just bring it down to the floor between your hands, just forward. Yeah. Take your left knee to the floor where we started. Slide your right leg forward like the splits. So we started the class with this. Well, it was like the second posture we did. That's it. Leg sliding forward, hands on the mat, breathing deep. And then sit up. Go to down dog and raise the left leg up. And go into the urinating dog zone. And then bring that left foot down through toward your hands, back knee on the floor, start to straighten that front leg and slide the foot forward only as far as feels right. You can sit up or fold forward, I leave that to you. Straighten your front leg, Laura. Yeah, we're, we're, we jumped over that one, we're doing that. Yeah, you got it. Breathing deep. and return to downward dog. Raise your right leg, open the hip, same version we were doing before. But now you're going to bring your right knee between your two hands, like that pigeon pose. Right knee forward, yes. Sit up tall. You decide the placement of that foot. Further forward, it increases stretch. Further back, decreases. Start to walk your hands forward. Breathing. and start to walk your hands back and sit up. Go to down dog, just switch legs, go directly left foot forward, left knee forward. It's like that pigeon pose thing on the left side. You increase the intensity by bringing the left foot forward, you decrease it by bringing it back toward your hip. Either way, try to draw that right hip down toward the floor. You'll feel that on the outer left leg. You choose whether you're folding forward or remaining upright. And return to downward dog. And now come through to sitting. Bring both feet in toward your groin, open the feet like Baddha Konasana, sit up. I'm gonna have you do something slightly different this time. Take your elbows on your inner legs. If you're, if you're really flexible, you're gonna to have to lift your legs up to find your elbows. But I want you to try to lift your knees up, but you're, you're resisting with your elbows. So I'm trying to pull my knees up, but I'm holding them down with my arms. Do that for a couple of breaths and then release and see if your legs went further down that time. So you created a resistance first by trying to lift the knees up, lift them up, but you're resisting with your arms and then you soften and let the legs come down and see if do that a couple of times and see if they they went a little deeper after that resisting action and then start to fold forward
and now sit up. Do you remember the double pigeon? It looks like you're in a half lotus, but your lower legs parallel to each other. Put the left foot under, right foot on top. The foot is flexed and the lower legs are sat just on top of each other, like I'm doing with my arms up here like this. So there's like that, that triangle shape and then fold forward if it feels appropriate. Flex both feet and try to keep the lower legs parallel, right? Under and above each other, breathing deep. and sit up and change your legs. Folding forward only if it feels appropriate. Raj, flex that foot a little more, the one on top. Just flex it a lot, that one, yeah. Also, Laura, flex that top foot a little more. Yes. And sit up, straighten both legs in front of you, up, 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 up. bounce them around a little bit. And lie down on your back. Bend your left leg so you pull your left heel in toward your bum. Put the right foot in half lotus on top of that leg. And reach through with two hands and grab your left shin and hug the legs in toward your body. If you want to increase the intensity, you keep that right foot closer to the knee rather than way up like a half lotus. It, if it's higher up by the knee, you have more stretch. You're gonna decide where you wanna put it. Closer to the knee, it in in increases the intensity. Down near the hip, it decreases it. And change other side. Hugging the leg in, let your head just relax on the floor. So remember, if you want to increase the intensity, that left foot is closer to the right knee. If you want to decrease it, you pull that foot down toward your hip. And release. Straighten both legs up toward the sky. Your bum's on the floor. Bend your knees, grab the outer feet and pull your knees toward the floor. The lower legs are perpendicular to the floor. Karina, feet up, knees down. Bend your legs, yes, like that. But legs bent, pulling the knees down, yes. And now straighten the legs up. You can release the feet. Open the legs straight out to the sides. Just open both legs. You can take your hands to your inner legs, but it's just the weight of your arms. It's not forcing, you're breathing deep. Bring legs to center again. Start to bend your legs, bring the bottoms of the feet together like Baddha Konasana lying on your back. The knees come out to the side. Pull your feet in toward your body using your hands, but breathing deep. Knees are opening out to the side. Like Baddha Konasana, feet together, Samir, Samir Superman, feet together, knees out. Knees out, yeah, like Baddha Konasana. And Release your feet, straight legs. Bring your knees in toward your chest. Give yourself a nice big hug.
Now let your feet come down to the mat, release your knees, let your feet come down, straighten your legs. And this sounds a little weird, but I want you to put your right ankle on top of the left foot. So both legs are straight, but what your ankle is between your big toe and your second toe, just resting there on top. Look up here, if it's confusing. It's just like this. Then just let them wiggle side to side like this, just like windscreen wipers, bop, 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 side to side. And then switch, other one on top, and just let them flop back and forth. And then both feet to the floor. Take your feet a little bit apart, put your arms by your sides, palms up, legs straight, lie down, and relax. I'm gonna take you through a little relaxation. Raise your right leg a little bit from the floor, just a little bit. And now tighten the whole leg from your foot to your hip. Tighten everything. And now see if you can, when you release it, release it a little bit at a time in reverse from hip, upper leg, lower leg, ankle, foot, and right leg down. Now left side, left leg up. Tighten everything from the foot to your hip and in reverse, releasing from hip, upper leg, lower leg, ankle, foot, left leg down. No more effort, both legs relaxed. Raise your right arm just a little from the floor. One finger at a time, make a fist. Now tighten your fist, wrist, forearm, upper arm, hold. And releasing first from your upper arm through the lower and the fingers open like petals of a flower and your right arm comes to the floor and relax. Left arm up, make a fist, tighten your fist, wrist, forearm, upper arm, shoulder, and then re release in reverse, shoulder, upper arm, lower arm, wrist, fingers opening, left arm down, and relax. No more effort. Now tighten your buttocks and your lower abdominal muscles at the same time and push your low back toward the floor and release. Raise your head just a little bit from the floor. Turn it slowly toward the right and then toward the left. And return to center, try to touch your chin toward your chest, lower your head to the mat and relax. Feel the tensions release from your neck. Now see how small you can make your face. Press your eyes together, press your lips together, squeezing. Now keep your eyes closed, but raise your eyebrows, open your mouth and stick your tongue out and stretch your face. Now retract your tongue back into your mouth, close your mouth, puff your cheeks up like big balloons, fill them with air. And now release that air from your mouth. Inhale, nose. Exhale from the mouth with a sigh. <sighs> Again, inhale. <sighs> One more time, nice big inhale. And exhale. <sighs> no more effort. Surrender to gravity. I'll leave you for a minute or two in your relaxation. And then I'll bring you out.
bring some awareness back to your breath. And a bit of movement to fingers and toes. And hands and feet. Take a big inhale, raise your arms over your head, stretch. Exhale, relax. Bring your knees up to your chest, give yourself a nice big hug. Rock from side to side. Tip over to either side, release your knees, sink into the floor. and then slowly sit up. Thank you very much. I hope your hips are feeling open. <laughs> they should. We have maybe just about five minutes. If there's anything you wanna talk about or if anyone has a question, you can virtually raise your hand by clicking where it says participant and I'll see a little hand come up. If that doesn't make sense, you can just uh, wave David. your arms around. Hello. Yes. Hi. Um, I see that you're recording this. Is there any way that we can watch it again or download it or something? It's actually Linda is recording it, so she's got the power. <laughs> okay. So you'll have Linda, to ask Linda. Can I watch it again? <laughs> Oh, the power. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe here's not. What I, here's what I recommend. We, we might have to, what I found with other Zoom recordings is it requires some editing. Exactly. Because you can't just throw it up there. There's all this wait time before and things. So it's up to Linda and maybe she, she has contact for all of you guys. And if it's available, she'll let you know how. Okay. The other okay. thing that I, I discovered is, um, and I don't know, we can talk about it or even right now, I've been recording Zoom sessions that I personally run, but when I, I haven't uploaded them yet because one thing I have to edit is when people ask questions, their face appears on the screen. Not everyone wants the world to see them, right? Or even their name. So what I'm personally having done is every time someone speaks and their face appears, the screen just goes black and it says student asking a question. Yeah, so anytime another person appears to keep their privacy, we just blank the screen. So I don't know, that's something that Linda, we should talk about. Yeah, I did Both that on privacy. the video um, and I put it on private on the website so those who paid for the workshop then if they want it they can email and ask for the link um oh, there you go this but it just it takes me a little while especially we're in teacher training right now so i won't be able to do that in the real new near future but if like next week you send an email at least i know who wants the the link it seemed like an easy question, but somehow the technology isn't as simple as we'd hope. <laughs> well, the technology also just to send out the email to the group, it's not, it doesn't work like that. You have to um, cut and paste every email. So it'd be better if you want it, just let us know and we know who would want to be on that list and we can send it to you. Well, Even it should just be, the link, you'd send them a link, right? Because yeah, it's, exactly. it's online, it's in, living in the cloud somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Just let me know. Any other questions or comments, anything? But thank you, Justine, for asking. Anything else? Are your hips open? Natalie, you'll have to unmute yourself, Natalie. Yes? Okay. I'm just wondering if you recommend um, engaging the bandhas while doing all these stretches. Yes, I recommend engage, engage your bandhas as long as you can throughout every day. 
that's clear enough. <laughs> Just release them when you need to. <laughs> but yes, because the bandhas, and, and there's a lot of mis, misunderstandings about bandhas, yeah. But it does help to stabilize the core and, and helps us to be more aware and to control, move with, with control. Um, so yes, try to engage it the whole time. But it's sort of a bigger conversation as to what a bandha actually is. But yes, I would say try to hold them for the whole time. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kanchi, you want to unmute yourself there? Uh, hi. 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 Um, when we were doing this kind of exercise, yeah. We're, um, you said if we put our leg more uh, closer to the knee, then we're in, uh, intensifying the stretching here, right? It more tends much. to be, yes. But uh, what would you recommend uh, to, if you're working towards being able to be in Lotus in Marichasana someday, um, would you recommend just staying upright here like this or trying to put this more like in? and then so that it rotates. That double pigeon thing that we did, you know, where you're sitting down and one leg on top of the other. Yeah. But you might even have to elevate your hips a little, sit on a block or something. If the hips are too tight, you might have to elevate your hips so that you can start to lean forward. But I mean, eventually, if you do my chasana the way to, um, it's originally thought, you, you rotate the leg, right? Like your foot comes here. You're talking about Marichyasana now? I'm asking you about, yeah, about Marichyasana, yes. Yeah, it's different. Marichyasana, you want to pull the foot way up near the hip and point the foot. It's different. Yeah. Okay, so if I'm working towards that, I should try to put my mm -hmm. foot closer to the groin or? Well, here's the silly thing about the, the yoga. If I wanted to improve my bicycle riding, what activity should I do to improve my bicycle riding? Bicycle riding. Ride a bicycle. If you want to find greater depth in Murchyasana, you do Murchyasana. Because <laughs> then you're, you're targeting exactly what needs to happen, yeah? But if you're just wanting to open the hips throughout the day while you're watching TV or something, you can just put your legs in a position or, or if you're just wanting to do stretches and things, you can put on your favorite song and do it on one side with your leg in a stretch and then do it on the other side or something. Otherwise, you just do your practice, yeah? Does that make sense? Sort of? Yeah, yes. Sometimes there's no quick boat, you know? And uh, David, uh, I wanted to tell you something else. If if we are when we're doing Triangha Mukha Ekapada Paschimottanasana, if it hurts on the outside of the knee when we start pulling back, then what are we doing wrong? When you're, when you're going back or when you're doing Triangha Mukha, because Triangha Mukha is not back; it's forward. I know, I know, but now it's just to, it's explained in in the post we were. Uh, then we started going back, 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 yeah. back, and there's a point actually starts yeah. pulling too much here. Then you don't, want to, you don't want to feel it on the outer knee. Don't go so far back, or maybe elevate the hip of the other hip. Put something under it, a towel or something stable, because what's happening? That one hip is coming up, and it's making you roll onto the outer leg, and you're feeling it on the outer knee. You want it, the more level you can keep the hips, the more you'll feel it across the front of the leg. The more that hip picks up, the more you'll start to feel it on the outer knee. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Anything else? Claire, you have your hand up. You'll have to unmute yourself there. Um. Yeah, it was about, because I'm asymmetric, so like in downward facing dog, I can get my right heel down, but not my left. And I wanted to give you any suggestions to make myself more symmetric in my practice. Well, 
I'd have to see your practice and understand if, because if you're if you have only one heel down and the other up, I think your hips are going to be like that. It would almost be better to keep both hips on the same, uh, both heels at the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not sure. Have you had an injury on that one leg or something? No, um, I don't think so. No, I mean I twisted my ankle once badly. That's that side. See it in person or you know really see just you doing that you can experiment with the distance of your down dog try longer or shorter see if it gets the heels closer to the floor it sounds like one achilles is just shorter than the other well it's also some of the postures the one the echo whatever when you've got one leg forward and the other back like one side i'm i can do it and the other side i can't do anything like this sort of thing so yeah, I tend to go to the left on that side. Well, well, then you would leave your left hand down on the floor to help stabilize you. Yeah. Yeah. So one hip more open than the other. Yeah. No one is truly symmetrical. We all have these things, and the fact that we do yoga, we're just more aware of these imbalances. Everyone has them, just most people don't know it. It just brings it to light. When you're doing the exact thing on right side, then left side, immediately you see, wow, one side's tighter. It, it just comes from life. If you've ever had a child and you carried your child on one hip for a, for a lot of years, or you have one of those 20 kilo Manduka yoga mats that you're carrying to your class on the same shoulder all the time, or we talk on the phone with one, you know, there's things that we do that throw us into imbalance so the yoga just helps us to be aware of that and try to find a little more balance okay but i think we're over time now um linda thank you very much for putting this together i want to take one little moment to unmute everyone and we can say thank you hey everybody thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you you. Take good care of yourself. Take good care of one another. Take this good, juicy, positive energy and go out there and make the world a better place. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank, you. Bye -bye. Thank you both. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>